This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Always appreciate Alyssa Orange's time when she joins us on halftime. Heck, I appreciate her time every day of the week. Uh, oh, you're so nice. Yes, but we certainly appreciate these 15 to 20 minutes that you give us on a weekly basis, Alyssa. So thank you very much. How are you today? Well, I appreciate I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me on Absolutely. every week. Yeah. I enjoy being with you guys just as much. Can you pitch? Can you can you pitch over? <laughs> the, the I, uh, yeah, they I, need, need a little depth right now. And I, I'm out of yeah. eligibility. Yeah, I tried to pitch as a softball pitcher, and I just couldn't make it work. So I played second base and outfield, and so I'm going to go with, no, probably not. All right, Let me I'll ask Fitz. As, I'll get back I'll to you. I'll take that as a no. Uh, straight up, does Arkansas have enough pitching to survive a regional? Just the arms, just the, just the available arms. Yeah. Yep, I, I, I don't know. And, and, and I think that all comes down to, I think, I think no, if you have to go really deep into your bullpen, obviously. Uh, but if you can find someone who can give you meaningful minutes as starters, minutes, innings as starters, then I think you have an opportunity to make things work, move some pieces around, and structure it to where you can find success. But, I mean, if you can't win a game against Lipscomb in the middle of the week because you don't have any arms left, uh, that's really concerning down the road when pitching depth is what wins you national championships. Yeah, like that. I, like Dave will say after the game yesterday, and it's true, and it was the same Missouri State. We're focused on the weekend, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. The SEC games mm-hmm. matter more. That's really where you're racing. And it's not like you just throw the Tuesday game away. Lipscomb tried right. to do that. Um, but it, it, it's not about the midweek games. It has nothing to do with the midweek games. No. It just has yeah. to do with the idea that usually in a regional, even at home, you know, you have to go four or five games in the case yeah. of four days. And right now I think they, I mean, there's trouble making it through a weekend. Look at how the, the team pieced together Saturday um, in, in the sweep over A&M, and they got it done. But, uh, man, it just looks like it'd be tough to piece together what you usually need in a regional. I don't even mean about the midweek games. It's all, it's all about the idea of playing, you know, four games in, three, in four days or five games in four days. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think just long term, that's, that's what you got to look at. And, and Dave talked about that at the Water Club on Monday. He was just like, look, at Missouri State, we got to a point where we're like, we're saving our arms for we got Texas A&M coming this weekend. I'm not worried about it. They're not worried about those games. They're – they're not stressed about what happened over Lipscomb. Would you have loved a little more often? Sure, and you can dissect how that game went down. But you look at, like you mentioned, regionals, super regionals, college World Series. I mean, even the SEC tournament when you have to play so many games in a row. And we all know sometimes that maybe it's just best to lose that first game in the SEC tournament, come home and rest. Um, those those conference tournaments, in my opinion, aren't, aren't important. Um, but... You, you hope that you look at who you do have and you hope that guys like Zach Morris can find that confidence again. He has started to come on a little bit better and a little bit better. Can he be a guy that maybe we see turn things around and help this bullpen through this stretch and into the postseason? Guys like Ben Bybee continuing to come on. Um, you need some of these guys that you thought you could rely on that have struggled this year to kind of turn things around and pick it back up. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's what you need to happen. Let's move over to the other stick and ball sport. Um, the SEC tournament starts in Bogle in less yeah. than a week. Um, you know, that's the, that's a tournament that's at, that's at campus sites. And, man, it's, yeah. it's a high-level tournament, one of the best in the country. It <laughs> should be really exciting. And, of course, Arkansas is the defending champions. My question, though, right now, Alyssa, is how does the resume shape up for Arkansas softball to host a regional? Well, they look good right now, especially coming off that um, series win against Tennessee. Uh, this is a team right now that's, that's hitting its stride at its right time. Uh, you're getting pieces in place to where you've got the pitching depth that continues to develop, especially with Hannah Kamenzen in the circle, complementary to what Shanice Dels has done. Uh, your offense is continuing to get, you know, you're, you're not producing the kind of runs that you were last year or the year before, uh, but, but it's getting better. And, and those offensive numbers for Arkansas softball. So I can see them. I think I looked uh, at some posts on Twitter of the recent projections. They're a 12 seed, which doesn't make them a national seed, but they would host a regional uh, and then go on the road for a super regional. That's what it's looking like right now if the season were to end today. 
the season technically ends on Saturday or Sunday before the SEC tournament. So uh, they might have some wiggle room there, but I can see them hosting a regional as uh, one of those seeds in, in the, the 10th or 16 range. I was going to ask you, Alyssa, about the tight end from uh, North Texas that uh, he had committed and then he decommitted. Do, yeah. do, do we know why? What What was going on there? You know, I, I don't. I, I've seen some rumors, and now there are rumors that uh, Colorado showed interest and in maybe going to Colorado. And uh, we understand, you know, obviously Dion needs to fill some spots on his roster and um, the, the draw that is to play for a guy like Dion Sanders. So th- again, that's, that's something that I've read that I've seen. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it is unfortunate. It's the world that we live in. Um, you know, I personally just kind of wish guys would stick to uh, their word a little bit more, but it's recruiting and it's a cutthroat way of how college athletics, specifically football and, and basketball, as we talked about, that's just how things are. Uh, but yeah, I think it was a shock for a lot of people when they saw that news yesterday. Yeah, I wonder where they'll where they'll go uh, with the, if they'll try to go get another tight end. But I, I saw your Dolphins; they got my favorite player, my favorite running back, uh, Devin A. Chain. But but Cam Smith, A-chain. yeah, I, I love him. Yeah. I was going to get your yeah. thoughts on those first two picks: the Dolphins, Cam Smith, the D back sure. from South Carolina, would and and the running back. Yeah, no, I'm excited. You know, they only had four picks, I think, in this year's draft. Not a lot. Um, obviously had to forfeit two of them and uh, then uh, did a lot of moves to, to trade some away. But I think they, they, they drafted smart. I think that's exactly what they need, some more guys in the backfield uh, and, and some running back in speed because I think we went through some running backs last season, didn't really have a set guy. It kind of went both ways and kind of this guy was having a good stretch and this guy was having a good stretch. But uh, to have a guy like A-Chain, who we've seen play against Arkansas for many years, come to uh, the Dolphins is fun too. You know, you say that and I kind of laugh because they also signed as a free agent James Blackman, who was a former FSU quarterback who then transferred to Arkansas State. And uh, I, I, he's a good kid, but man, I just I don't think football should be in his future and I can't get rid of him. <laughs> Alyssa, I want to revisit um, Deion Sanders in Colorado with you for a moment. I hadn't seen the rumors sure. about Varquez Gums, you know, going over there. I can understand why you'd want because there is immediate playing time for anybody who shows They got up 30, 40 there. openings, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be awful this year. They're going to mm-hmm. win maybe two or three games. They were terrible last year. Maybe they'll be a little bit better this next year. But it's going to be a disastrous first season. And maybe you just expect that with a first-year head coach that's turning the roster over at a 75% rate. But um, I don't know. <laughs> I just I can't imagine. When, when you don't even have – when the team you had in the spring game is, is totally different than the team that you're going to have that shows up in August at camp, like, good luck installing yeah. – whatever schemes yeah. you want to install and, and everybody get to know each other and having some continuity. And I'm not rooting against Colorado. I, I just, I just think they're going to stink this next year. Maybe they get better after that, but man, Jordan Dominic went there and maybe he can put on uh-huh. a display. I don't know if he's got another year of eligibility after this, but he ain't going to win many games. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Like I, I get like what you're saying, right? You're, you're rebuilding. We obviously know how Dion has approached uh, structuring things with his roster and with his program. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a really good transition from Jackson State to Colorado in year one and maybe not even in year two because you make a solid point. It's all about install. And you can have as many playmakers you want on the field. If you're not installing, if these guys aren't on the same page, it doesn't matter. It's like watching, you know, these all-star games and, and people are so critical of the McDonald's All-American games and watching. It's like, oh, well, they didn't look spectacular. And it's like, well, these guys have only been playing together for like three days. <laughs> what do you, it's going to be a little vanilla, you know? And so you can't expect to, to have a lot of execution if, if guys are still learning what they're even supposed to be doing. So... You know, it, it's a risk. I, you know, we know that, that, that Dion has, has some ability to coach. He's shown some success. He's had success at a lower level. And so what does this one look like? We have no idea. But maybe tune in in two years, three years to find out. Well, look, I mean, it's all about the situation and, and what you're able to do with it. I mean, Bill Belichick wasn't a genius when he was the Cleveland Browns head coach. <laughs> it, it took the perfect situation. It took, it took yeah. luck. 
it took an injury to Drew Bledsoe and giving Tom Brady a chance. It, there was luck involved in it. I'm not – look, Bill Belichick mm-hmm. is maybe the greatest NFL coach that the league has had in the last 50 years. But there's a luck aspect to this, and it's got to be the right situation. And what Dion is doing right now at Colorado, you couldn't have done that anywhere else. I think it's a smart mm-hmm. high, It's a smart choice by him that if he's going to go to big-time Division I college football, that has got to be a place where – a, they were absolutely awful. I don't just mean mediocre and, you know, a string of six. They won six one seasons. game last year. Right. Yeah. I mean, absolutely They're awful where you can do a total teardown. And and if it doesn't work, be like, you know what? Mm-hmm. They were bad when I showed up and I couldn't get them any better. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, well, it's basically like hand over the reins. Let me do what I want. If we If I fail, it's not like I failed any farther than where you were before. Alyssa, another transfer, but a different sport in Connor Vanover. I think this what be we were talking about that earlier. This might be his fourth school for him. Uh, where do you see him ending up? Because the kid can play, and I'm pulling for him. Uh, you know, yeah. he need, but do you think he can? He's a Division One player, like in Arkansas or LSU again, or does he kind of go to a lateral move? No, yeah, yeah. I think I think it might be more of a lateral move, and I only say that because you know, Connor, great kid. Comes from a great family, uh, but just hasn't been able to find that right fit for him. And you're right. You know, you go from California to Arkansas, then to over to ORU, and now where do you go? Do you come back home to a school like a Little Rock or UCA just to play close to family? Um, or do you try to go D1? But I just don't think that he, when you look at the other big guys in Division One right now, Connor's just a little bit slower. He's not as strong. It's still awkward because he is so big and doesn't have a whole lot of control over much of um, his body in the paint like you need to. I just don't see a Division One team picking him up. So I, I want him to have success. You kind of you hate it when a guy bounces around and around because I know that's hard on an athlete. Um, maybe you just hope he finds a place in this uh, last couple years of eligibility, uh, one or two, whatever he has left, that he finds some place that he can just at least fit in. So I was texting with Alyssa before the show today, guys, and um, she has got a big party planned for <laughs> her daughter, Bella, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, second birthday party. This is a yep. really cool um, invite that I didn't get. That's uh, okay because hey. I'm in Starkville, but it's, uh, yeah. this doesn't look like just an average, regular, old-fashioned second birthday party you got going on here. No, she's, she's getting a hippie birthday party. Um, she's spoiled. Uh, and, uh, I also two year old hippies. Seem to get I a little, it. a hippie, you know, if you put up the piece, it's a two. So peace, peace, love and two. And Bella's going to be two. when I, uh, was working on a balloon arch when you texted me and I, I took a piece of wood from my brother-in-law's can, he's building a house. So he gave me some extra piece of wood, a big three foot by three foot. And I used my jigsaw and cut out a Volkswagen van, uh, photo booth thing and painted it and, uh, tie dye cupcakes and got a bounce house to wear them Alyssa, out. You so s- you sound, I just need good weather. I say this with all due respect, and you know how I feel about you as a mom. You sound like that mom, that mom I that's feel, going I I mean, am that, all out, eleven out of ten I, for I'm the birthday. I'm that mom. Yeah, I'm that mom when it comes to my my parents did did parties for us. But here's the thing: like, I'm not spending a lot of money. I'm just crafty and I like to do stuff. Uh, and my parents were kind of the same way too. Like they didn't spend a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of money, but we still did cool birthday parties. Like I had one that was like a, uh, secret agent one where they just like cut out things that looked like files and those were the invitations. And they sent us on a scavenger hunt around the neighborhood and we had to solve a mystery. And, uh, it doesn't take a lot of money to have a lot of fun. And so I think I, I enjoy crafting these things together, uh, even though it does seem a little overboard. Last thing, and I'll let you go because i got to bring up Dodgers for you. Clayton Kershaw. Oh, my God. And, come on, Kershaw's NL Pitcher of the Month. I'm not digging a grave for your I, Dodgers. Okay. Your right. Hall of Famer right. is right. the Pitcher of the Month in the National yeah. League. Well, that's good. Hey, they, they also beat the Cardinals, which was also good. I noticed they lost two out of three to the Pirates. I did, too. I thought you were going to bring that up. Well, I'm just not celebrating too much in April. Um, well, I'm it's, waiting the little, it's the little things, Phil. Matt is tamping my, my enthusiasm down for the Pirates until 60 June. 60 games. I have to wait until June mm-hmm. before I can really get fired up. But Cardinals okay. fans, if you want to jump off the bandwagon right now, go for it. I don't blame you if that's the case. 
You can come hang out with us. There's always room on the blue bandwagon. Oh, it is a very large bandwagon, getting larger every come day. Come on. Come hang out sure. with us. We're a lot of fun. We're great at parties. <laughs> Listen, you are great at parties, and I appreciate you hopping <laughs> on with us. Thank you, and good luck with the birthday yeah. this week. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right down to UFC and boxing. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way for you to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. Bet online. Where the game starts.